In today's video, I wanna cover how to go from basic substance painter materials like this into more sophisticated ones like this one. This has aesthetics built into it. You can understand the materiality and its intentions. It has relief detail into it, it has layers, decals, has noise. Now, obviously it's not perfect, it's a little bit pixelated at parts, but we're gonna be looking at this rendered really far away in Substance Painter and in Unreal Engine when we get to that point. So let's go ahead and get started. The first step you wanna do is obviously open up your file. If you don't know how to do that, you go to File, New, and then you select it. Select your file from over here. I have a FBX file and I'll just open it up. Now it takes time to do that. Now I'm auto unwrapping my model. I'm just bringing in this entire mass with everything in it with different texture sets. I'm just bringing everything in together because essentially I'm just conceptualizing materiality here and I'm bringing it to Unreal Engine. I'm not like perfecting this for a game or any like specific art image. This is more or less conceptualization from an architect's perspective. You could tell that it's pretty flat. If I apply any material here, let's put this artificial leather. It's flat and there's not really much to it. So what you wanna do is you wanna use smart materials, but smart materials will not work right now unless you bake it. So this bronze like one of my favorite because it shows a lot of uh, edge detail. There's nothing going on here, it's super flat. So I'm gonna go up here to bake. Okay, you can go to mode and go to bake. And here, I should mention in common settings, you have output size set 204080, that's fine. You can always change it later. Go ahead and click bake select textures. This is gonna take a little bit of time, so just let it do its thing. You will know it's done because return to paint mode will be available for you to click on. Right now, I do not have the option. So it might take like two minutes, five minutes, really just depends on your computer. Now it's done, you can click return to painting mode. You'll notice it looks slightly different. It's got like shadows built into it. There's depth. It doesn't look as flat. So now if I take this bronze material and I place it on this object, you'll notice there's a lot more information built into it. Okay, I covered this in my previous video. I just wanna kind of recap it. From here, you wanna go ahead and throw this material on everywhere. This is what I like to do because I think it's pretty sophisticated as a starter material. So this is that bronze armor right here. I like to do this to make sure I have all my texture is looking right. Nothing looks kind of warped. It's fine. It's like some somewhat pixelated in certain places, but it's okay. Now from here to use smart materials, essentially what they are is this kind of file folder format and it has a bunch of layers in it. And to understand how to actually work with this, you kind of want to work backwards with built in materials and then layer them up to build your own. So quickly, I'll just hide some of these layers to know what they're doing. That one controls the edge. You can see it's disappearing. Surface detail. Yeah, this I could see it. Dirt, obviously that's that dirt right here. You'll see it's removing. Now I'm looking at the ground, um, base material, and that's that, okay? So here you'll notice that that's what makes up this layer. This is layer one, this is the generic one. I can delete it. It's not part of that smart material. Now I know that if I turn on base material, I'm getting that base, right? So I'm gonna just turn all these back on. And from here, I'll show you that how to control the base material. You'll come to base material here and you'll notice it has properties, okay? If you don't see this, you can come up to Windows, Views, and you have all these things that uh, you might use. Property fills is here, so if you don't see it, it's here. Texture set list is important. Texture set settings are important. And then display settings is important, but I have mine embedded over here. So anyway, I just want to cover that. Base color, let's change this slightly, okay? You see that it's changing. A lot of the other properties like the dirt and the edges is still remaining, but just the base color is changing. This is kind of one of the most important parts. To this and i'm gonna undo that because i actually don't want to use that i'm gonna hide it okay so you could tell that you're getting the dirt it kind of looks already like concrete but there's no base material so what i'll go ahead and do and i'll go back to normal materials not smart materials just the normal ones and i'll find a concrete maybe this is fine okay i'll throw it on top now you'll notice this is stacking i'll collapse this that's the smart material now what i want to do is i want to move this underneath that because the bronze material is going to go on top of it you'll see so now you have kind of this uh, smart material that's embedded concrete material with the bronze armor, but I turned off the bronze itself. So it's seeing through it because it's transparent now, except for the dirt layers and the edge layers. And now it's kind of picking up the concrete as a space. And that's how you know, a lot of these sophisticated smart materials work. They just layer on top of each other. So I can come here and change the concrete color can make it darker, lighter, whatever. And then I can change some of the tiling, make it smaller and bigger. This is fine. If I want to use this over and over again, for example, like this is a separate piece. And if I want the same exact material coming over, if this is done, I'm ready to go create a folder. I'll name this, call it new ground it's here. And now I can right click and click create smart material. And that's going to generate right here. Okay. And I can go ahead and I can move it over here and it will match exactly like this one. Okay. Now it's not parametrically tied. For example, if I come in here and I start adjusting on this new object, it's not going to update. 
this is its own object now or its own material and you'd have to like recreate it for you to repeat it or update it, I should say. Yeah, simple as that. Now I can go ahead and I can apply this to everything else if I want this to kind of be the base. And I want these pieces to be slightly different. So I'm gonna keep that different. We'll figure that out in a second. You should apply filters pretty quickly. So if I come here and I go to filters, these are pretty powerful. Oh, I gotta clear out the smart material. Now, that's quite a bit I like to use often. Move this to large. Okay, so brush, this one's pretty good. So if I apply this, You'll notice that there's some lines that I can come up here to the properties and adjust them. Okay. And then I could change the intensity, add some depth, and then the length of it's going to make it short. And then I can change the rotation of this thing. So it, it's pretty powerful. It gives you noise. Again, it looks like it's sweeped concrete, right? Scraped or maybe plaster, however you want to make it. Right now, it kind of looks like concrete, but I can make it lighter, make it look like uh, plaster or stucco. So right now, I'm, I'm getting some noise. I kind of like that. And then I'll layer that with, let's say, let's go to rain. Rain's pretty good right here, rain or water drops, I should say. It's gonna make it look like it's wet and it's been rained on, okay? And there's a few things we could do. We don't want this reflectivity. So part of this is knowing how to control the parameters. So down here, I'll come down and I'll say, okay, I want the drops to be bigger. Okay, we'll do that. Or sorry, smaller, not bigger. And by doing increased drop amounts, it helps with that. So I can also change the scale of these things. You know, it's just like something you just observe. Now there's more of them. They're smaller scaled, but it still looks wet. I don't want that wetness. Come down, there's materials, expand that. And then there's drops roughness. I can just kind of increase this and it should flatten the reflectivity. So it doesn't look wet anymore. Okay, so we got quite a bit of noise. I think this is pretty good, to be honest. Uh, let's move on to this material over here. So what do I want to do with that? I'll go ahead and I'll go back down to my smart material, which was the new ground. I'll apply it, but I'm gonna change it quite a bit. I'll turn off the edges for now. There it is. I will use some filters. So now I'll come up to filters. I want this matte finish perforated. So if I move this, you'll notice there's a bunch of holes. That looks really ugly, I'm not gonna lie. So you're gonna wanna increase the scale. I just want noise, that's what I care about. So I increase the scale and then hole size. I'm gonna take this down, okay? And it's just gonna look like it's dotted. It's, it's just some nice texture. Okay, it's just giving it noise, some difference. So I like that. And another one I like is, let's see, stylization. If you apply this, kind of nice brushing and there's presets in here you can change and I'm gonna change this to hand painted. See what that looks like. It's quite a bit, I think that's nice. Okay, uh, I could do the same thing here. I could just move this and see what that gives me. You know. It, I actually like these sometimes because they don't look like they're super realistic. They look really nice in terms of conceptual art. So I'm gonna move this to hand painted, see what that looks like. Yeah, kind of nice. It gets rid of a lot of the detail that we had in terms of the, the relief of the raindrops. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. One thing I'm gonna do is probably make this darker. So I'll go back to this material, which was massing highlights, concrete cast. So I'll make this slightly darker. That's fine. That gives me contrast. So now this material is considered attachment. I'm gonna make this slightly different. Let's start with this chrome blue tint. Okay, I'm gonna throw that here. Okay, this looks very unrealistic and very, very bad. So how do we make this look a little bit nicer? Because not every smart material has sophisticated qualities to it in terms of having noise and layers of, of depth. So here I'll look at this. Uh, I probably wanna remove this new ground material. Just get rid of it, we don't need that. Get rid of the bronze armor, we don't need that as well. And, and I don't need this either. So all I have is the blue tint. So let's expand it, see what, what it has. And so it's got this purple surface. Turn that on, turn that off. And that's the base. So underneath the base material, there is a subcategory of gradient. If you click into that, it gives you the parameters of that specific one. From here, what do I wanna do? Let's go ahead and turn these back on. Okay, from here, let's see, what can we do? I'm gonna go ahead and I'll go to Smart Mass. And this gives me a lot of the edges. So when I clicked the bronze material, it gave me a lot of the edge information, but I can go ahead and just apply my own over here. But edge Strong is pretty good one. So this one highlights some of the edges you can see, and I can go ahead and, I'm sorry, this is kind of loading. If I select this, I can change the color of that edge, to whatever I want. I'll stick with this for now so I can get some definition of the edge, all right? And then from on top of that, I'm just gonna go to my filters. I'm gonna do very similar things I did previously, where I'll come in, I'll just grab the water drops, increase that. It's pretty good. I get, they gave me a lot of noise already. I think from here, I can go ahead and, well, oil paint's pretty good too. It's kind of like stylized. So it really flattened it, made it kind of look painted. It looks like it's been smeared. Getting a lot of quality here, a lot of kind of um, small scale quality. You could tell that 
again, it just looks like it's been handled with an inconsistency, which is quite nice here. Zoom out, take a look at it. Very nice. And so I want to know what's controlling the main color here. So let me see. Let's turn these off. It's totally white. So under this base material, there's two gradients. And so I can, I guess I can go something like this, do something like that, make it lighter. This is good. I just had to turn back these other layers. Okay. Anyway, that's me messing around. Uh, I just wanted to show you how you could change colors and how you'd find that. So here it is. From here, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to add some textures. Now, I'll come up to alphas right here. And there's some good ones like barcodes pretty good. If I come and drag it, you'll see that it's kind of snapping to a face. Now what's best to do is probably go in ortho mode, which is up here and go to ortho. If it does this where you can't select it, you see it has F5 and F6. You just click F6 and it snaps to perspective or sorry, ortho F5 is perspective. So it's nice to kind of switch between those. If you hold alt and shift, it snaps into a flat face. So I'm doing this alt and shift. It snaps to that face, alt and shift. There you go. It snaps. Okay. So that's pretty useful. Anyway, take this barcode and I'm going to drop it over here. Ask me, do I want mass base color? In this case, I want a relief off of this alpha. So I'm going to click height. So you can see that it's starting to like embed a relief into this object. Now there's more sophisticated ways of doing it than this. You see, I can move it around. Okay, so right now I get this error. If you don't see this, you can click W on your keyboard. It turns it on and off. E is rotation. Okay. Helps you rotate. And then R is scale. So very similar to Unreal Engine. Now, if I want this to be longer, I can scroll down in the properties and you'll see that there is a few things here that'd be useful with, okay, how intense that is, height, that elongates it. If I need more length, I just go back to R and I elongate that right there. So look at it in perspective here, W to move it. So I could say I can move it, but I can't move it all the way down. You'll see it starts to get capped. There's different projection methods. So if I come up here where it says projection, I can go ahead and I change this to planar projection. It kind of helps a little bit. Try planar projection. That's going to get the whole thing. The whole thing will be covered. I don't think I need that. I don't want that. So let's go back to projection. I think I was at planar projection maybe. That looks pretty good. Get a nice kind of relief. Now, if I really wanted to get this front, I could just go and rotate it slightly. We got the whole front. Looks pretty good. Okay, now I can click a new brush to get rid of that. What else? What about if we wanted like this not to be imprinted, but just to be a graphic? So best bet is mask, but it takes um, a little bit of explanation. So I'm not going to cover that. I'll explain it. It's base color. I think that usually works pretty well, but I'm not going to select the barcode. Actually, I'm going to select something else. Uh, what about these three dots or these? It's not three. It's way more than three. It's like seven. I'm going to go ahead and drag this over and I'm going to click base color. You'll notice it doesn't come in correctly. And there's this kind of black white dots. I'm going to undo this. I'm going to go and snap to the ortho and I'll drag it over. That's going to give me a better position. There we go. That's better. Click R to scale it. I'll scale it down. I'll come back to layer two to deselect it. You'll notice that there is this box and then there are the dots and it's, it's inverted of the way I would want it. So if I come back to circle dots or circle dot lines, I come up here, it changes from normal to screen. And that way the, the black box is gone and I just get my white dots. Now this is a bit opaque. I can go ahead and make this a bit lighter, something like this. So it feels like it's kind of blended in. Next thing I could do is if I wanted fonts, you can come up here and pick a font you like. I'm going to look for impact. That's a pretty good one. If I can't find it, I'll just type it. All right, that crashed. Not sure what happened, but as soon as I tried to put the font, it kind of freaked out. So. I remade the whole thing and it's not perfect, but it's pretty close enough. Anyway, we were back at fonts. If you come up here to fonts and uh, by the way, if you have this kind of scroll down, you get the filtration. If you expand it, I noticed that it changed midway through. So I should explain that if you expand it out, it uh, gives you the options on top here. So it's easier. Anyway, if I come up here, I'm going to type impact because that's the font I want. Here we go. That's this. I just drag it over. I drag it over to this one on this side, uh, base color. Oh yeah, I should undo that. See, it's kind of sideways. I'll just snap right here. I'm going to place it right here. I'll do base color. So if you scroll down here, you have a few options and text right here is how you change it. So I'm just going to type like five or something. Okay. That's too big. Hit R so I could scale it, move it around, I'm just move it over here and then come up to opacity and just drop that down. That's fine. Okay. So we got that. Uh, another thing to cover would be Say I want something over here, like something that kind of distorts this edge. Come back to my alphas, look for something that's kind of like a scar. All right, so type drip. I think I'll try this one right here. Go height. There we go. Let's see. Let's move this this way. That's not really very useful. Okay, let's try moving this to 
different projection. There we go, that's better. Planar projection. It's gonna help, it's gonna get this side. That's what I wanted. So kind of drag this over down here. Yep, that's pretty good. And then hardness, you can adjust that. I want something to slightly distort that and give some, you know, edge wear and relief over here. Uh, it could be better, I can work on it a little bit, but it's fine for now. All right, so let me cover lights. Uh, I'll probably make a separate video on this as well, but let me just cover it here. Say I want lights on this mass over here. Now I know this mass is massing too, I could check. What you need to do for each texture set that you want lights, you need to go to texture set settings over here and you need to enable a channel, right? So here you have metallic, normal height, and I'm just gonna include the emissive. I just hit this plus sign and I click emissive. I should now have emissive. So I'm gonna create a new brush. I'm gonna go ahead and select the brush I want. What I've noticed is if I do like nails, get nice circles. But what I like actually better than that is the zipper. It gives me something squarish. So if I select this, you can see that is selected in my brush. And then if I scroll down, I do now have emissive. I just need to turn it on. Okay, you can see that it looks different now. It's not glowing. And if I click it and make this smaller, it won't glow. It's kind of got this light tone to it. All right, so what I need to do here is go to display settings. If you don't see this, go up to Windows, Views, Display Settings. Here you want to scroll down to Active Post Effects. You want to turn this on. Then you need to turn on Glare. To hit this checkbox after hitting this one on, okay? And then you don't need to do this, but I like to change the shape to Bloom. It just looks better in my opinion. Okay, so let's see if this works. Okay, it's still not glowing. So what could be the problem? The other thing that you need to do is you need to go to Global Settings, Shader Settings. And here there's Emissive Intensity. You need to just increase this a bit. And you see that it's glowing now. You get that kind of bloom effect and everything. And that might be too intense. You can kind of go crazy with this, but you probably don't want it to be insane. So I've just got to find something that looks right. And just notice that when you make this smaller, you can manually do it in the properties over here. Where is it? Size. Okay, so you can just move that manually or you can control scroll wheel. I think this is fine to be honest, but if you really want it to glow, make it the size you want it and then test it out. So I'm going to place lights right here, that and that. Just something simple. Not super intense. You don't want it to be super big in terms of scale. That looks kind of right. Make them bigger. Okay, that's fine. Just to get different sizes. And again, this is just all stylistic. It doesn't really mean anything. And it's just about aesthetics. If I click something right here, and if I hold shift, I can get a straight line. If I wanted to make it look like, I don't know, Tron-like. I don't like that, but you can get straight lines after you click once. So that, that way you can kind of control it. And then I can go ahead and I can stylize the ground. That looks really bad just because of these edges. I don't like that. So I can reduce the effect intensity. It looks better. So the difference is this is a little bit more painterly than this one. I'll do that same thing over here. Just kind of drop it. Looks fine. And then if I really wanted to kind of top it off, I can come to stylization and then add this on top of it. It's going to look exactly, not exactly, but very similar to the oil painting. And then I will move this over here. But I think that looks kind of nice. And actually one thing that I didn't cover that I think is useful is this peeling paint. I should uh, mention that this kind of ruins the edges. If I move this underneath it, the oil paint, for example, it'll be underneath it. So you won't see that kind of edging and you kind of get this bubbling, which I think this bubbling is kind of nice. It's another version of distortion and it looks like it's been worn down. Similar to what's happening over here, it's just a different version of it. That's pretty much it. That covers most of the things that allows you to get sophisticated materials, layering, a lot of depth, a lot of noise in your surfaces. Just gives you more realistic vibes or at least stylistic vibes that aren't just generic. And the next steps would be how to export this into Unreal Engine. Likely when I do that, I'll probably edit this slightly so uh, it's cleaner. And the next video, I'll be showing you how to take this into Unreal Engine in probably the easiest way that I can think of.